Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be answering this question. If you took the GMAT more than once and you accepted both the scores, let's say you took the test twice and you accepted both the scores, then which GMAT score does which business school receive is what this is all about. What is the prompt for this video? In one of our classes after the class, we had a post-class discussion and a few of our students had this doubt saying that if I took the GMAT twice and I accepted both the scores and I don't necessarily send the free scores to the same set of schools after both the attempts, then which school gets to see which score is what the doubt that they had? I thought many of us might have a similar doubt and might be in such a predicament. So let's basically do a video to help understand how to navigate, navigate through this question, right? Basically presented a couple of scenarios. Let's start with the first scenario, right? The first scenario basically is this. You took the GMAT the first time, you got a 680 in the GMAT, which is a good score, you accepted it. You sent your score to these five schools. You can send scores to five schools free of cost. Which are these five schools? A, B, C, D is what you have sent it. Come out, after about four or five days, you realize that, hey, my potential is more than 680. I would actually like to apply to the business schools with a 700 plus GMAT score. So you want to take the GMAT again. You prepare for a month, you take the ESR, you identify the chinks in your armor, you correct them, you take the GMAT mocks and then you realize that you're very highly probable to get a score which is 700 plus. You take the GMAT a second time. The second attempt went the way you expected it to. You realized your potential. You wanted a 700 plus. You got a 720. You accepted that score also. But even at, as the run-up to this examination, when you took the mocks, you were consistently scoring 730, 720. That you know that like the mistakes that you had in the first attempt, you have corrected those. So 700 plus is definitely there. So you wanted to change the mix of schools to which you were sending your free scores this time. You retained B and C from the first iteration, whereas you added a three new schools, which is X, Y, Z. Instead of A, D, E, now you are applying to X, Y, Z. So the second score, you asked GMAC to send it to B, C, X, Y, Z. Now, which schools will receive which scores is what the question is all about. Right? Let's keep it very straight and simple. This B, C, X, Y, Z, on the day you requested the score, GMAC will basically see what are all the valid scores on record. When he requested it, let's say the gap between these two is basically about 45 days. GMAT score is valid for five years unless it's cancelled by you. So the score is also valid. The score is also valid. So on the day of requesting the score, the valid scores available with on record are basically 680 and 720. So B, C, X, Y and Z will basically receive all of these scores, 680 and 720. The day you requested this score, the 680 to be sent, you had not done any other GMAT other than this GMAT. So the valid score on record for GMAT was basically the 680. So schools A, D, E will basically, A, B, C, D, E will receive 680, but B, C have been accounted here. So A, D, E will receive only 680. So B, C, X, Y, Z will get both the scores 680 and 720. A, D, E will receive only 680. If you are planning to apply to one of these A, D, E, let's say you want to apply to E, and you want to showcase the 720 to them, you have to spend additional money to send an additional score report to E alone. BC, no need. XYZ, anyway, will get both. To E, if you want to report the 720, you need to pay money and send the additional score report. Otherwise, E is not going to get to see your 720. So, has this clarified scenario one? Let's look at scenario two. In scenario two, you took the first GMAT. You cancelled the score because it was a 680. You said, like, I'm, I'm capable of getting more than this. So, no school receives the score. After 45 days, you took the second attempt. You got a 720. You request the 720 to be sent to B, C, X, Y, and Z. B, C, X, Y, and Z will receive it, right? Essentially, you would have written that I wanted it to be sent to A, B, C, D initially. Even if you accepted it at the exam center, came out and cancelled it within the 72-hour window, none of the schools will receive the 680. They'll receive only your 720 as a GMAT score, right? So essentially, again, quickly in this scenario, what's going to happen? B, C, X, Y, and Z will be the schools will receive the scores. And what score will they receive? They'll receive only one score, which is equal to 720. Now, if you have a 680, which is a good score, but you think that you want to improve upon it, right? You do not know how the second attempt is going to pan out to be, right? It could be a 720, 740, or it could end up becoming a 7, 670. That's basically in the future, so you do not know. But 680 is something that you are not happy with if that is the scenario you are in, right? If you are happy with the 680, the schools that you are targeting, 680 is a wonderful score to apply to those schools. No sweat at all. Don't do anything. But if you realize I want to improve my score and you have an element of doubt whether this is a good score at all, the safest thing to do, the safest thing to do when in doubt is to cancel your score. Cancel the 680. 
you can always pay the reinstatement fee and reinstate your GMAT score four years, 11 months from that time you took the test. So you take the 680, which is giving you another scenario. You canceled it because you are not happy with it. You come out, 45 days down the line, you take a second GMAT. That works out to 660, unfortunately. All that you do is cancel the 660, come out, pay additional dollars and reinstate 680 and apply with that if you do not want to go for a third attempt in the GMAT. So one thing we understood, which all scores will go to which schools depending upon when you request them. And the second thing that we also understood is that if you have even an iota of doubt, right, it's basically the reinstatement fee and the cancellation fee. If you do not cancel it to the examination center, they are going to be incurring. But it is, when in doubt, safer to basically cancel your score. You can always reinstate it. Best wishes.